Well hello again and welcome to my next project. This time what I'm going to try and do is convert this toaster oven which I got really cheap on Facebook Marketplace um, into a PID controlled oven for tempering. Now in some of my other videos you may have seen my other one which I bought very cheap and it was such rubbish that um, I decided just to get rid of it mainly because it was too small and recently I made a bigger longer blade and it just didn't fit and it was just too frustrating. So I got this one and it's actually brand new. It's never been used. I was incredibly lucky. One of the issues I've had with both tempering ovens and as you know or may not know but probably know the tempering temperature for a blade is really crucial and if it a lot of steels are around let's say 200 degrees centigrade if you go to 195 or 190 your blade will end up much harder probably Rockwell uh, depending on the steel uh, but maybe Rockwell 60 right if you go to 220 or 230 degrees Celsius then your hardness may go down to 50 and even possibly below so it really depends on the kind of blade you want to make and the kind of use that you're going to make of it but one thing that's very important actually is the consistency of the temperature and I got this oven thermometer and I tested it out on, on the old one and on this one and one thing that you find is that you get to the correct temperature so you set it on the thermostat here to maybe let's say 200 degrees and not that I ever expected it to be that accurate but the problem is not just the accuracy is that like for example sometimes I will set it to 200 but the thermometer will tell me we're at 250 or 230 so you reduce it and it goes oh great it's down to 190 you leave it for half an hour and it's gone back up to 215 220 so you've got absolutely no control over the tempering temperature and obviously that's just not acceptable so this is my project this is what I'm going to try and do so let's start looking at stuff Let's have a look at what I'm facing here. Uh, one, I'm not entirely sure that this glass door is going to supply very good insulation, but there's not much I can do about that. Although I could potentially replace the door, but that's another issue. Um, my main worry is these hot plates. Now, I got this oven because it came up and I grabbed it at that price, but I don't know how much space the mechanics of it under here are going to allow me in order to insulate this with KO wool. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep these, but that's, I won't know until I've opened the thing up. It's got a 26 litre um, oven, which is quite good. That's quite spacious, actually, as you can probably see from my hand. I've got a fair bit of space in here. I'm going to try and insulate it here as well and up the top underneath the heating elements. And then, of course, I'm going to have to build the uh, PID system. So let's have a look at what's needed for that. Right, so here is some of the uh, the more essential electronic kit that we're going to need for this. Now, if you've seen my video about building a heat treating oven, um, you'll see a lot of the details about uh, uh, the wiring and what I did on that one, and I'll put a reference to that video. But basically, just to take you through the, the stuff you need, this is the important thing. This is the PID controller and its bracket that it will fit in that holds it in place. This is the um, SSR relay, um, which controls the temperature or controls the, the amount of uh, power that's going into the oven. A heat sink, which that will sit on like that with some appropriate grease. And of course, the thermocouple, um, which is what is going to uh, sense the temperature in the oven, relayed back to the relay, and etc. The magic begins. Now I bought probably a far too big um, uh, enclosure for this, but partly because I think I'm going to put, as in the other, other oven, I'm going to put a computer fan in here uh, to help keep it cool. Um, so it might be too big, but hey. Now a lot of people who make these video, these uh, ovens actually fit the controls inside the, the computer. And they put everything in there but I don't like that because I think that that exposes it to too much temperature it's true that it makes it much more compact and mine will take more workshop workbench space but basically this is going to be tucked away a lot of the time so I don't care but um, I don't like the idea of putting it in here I think you're exposing all the electronics to far more heat than you need to and it's not a big deal to make a separate enclosure and I think there'll be um, actually 
advantages in terms of not having to tuck everything in there. So as you can see, I've decided to take out a lot of the guts of this thing. I could have tried to work out what was what, but I decided actually that it was easier for me just to start from scratch. And the other thing I decided to do is to get rid of the internal light. Uh, not because I like working in darkness in the oven, but simply I realized it would get in the way of the insulation that I wanted to put into the side of the oven, so it had to go. A fair bit of thought goes into where the thermocouple has to go, of course. It mustn't be too close to the elements, and at the same time, you don't want it um, to be too far away from where the blade's going to sit. So I've done a me special. I was impulsive. Um, I wanted to get on with things. And so what I did is I bought this cheap um, plastic enclosure on Amazon thinking, well, that will do. And it's not doing, it's just not doing. Um, I've cut the bits, this will go in there. This can go in somewhere, but it's the wrong shape. It's the wrong size. And I'm, I'm, I'm really angry with myself. <clears throat> I mean, not big time angry, but it's such a waste of bloody money. Um, because now, of course, I can't really use it for anything else because I butchered it. So, I got this. It's bright. It's brash. It's blue. Um, but you know what? I think it's going to be good. And I am going to redesign the whole thing. Um, you know, the PDI is going to go there. I'm going to have switches and fuses. Then I've got enough room inside to put, you know, the heat sink with the, with the SSD. It's not going to get in the way. I can put a fan. I can put a, an LED uh, transformer. Um, and it's going to give me a lot more uh, scope, I believe. So here we go.
so I've now done most of the wiring um, for the PID control box. I didn't film it because it's so boring and it's so tricky that I, I really couldn't face it. Um, but I will try and put a diagram to help you. Uh, it's quite, it's actually quite straightforward. It's just a bit of a brain exercise. And in fact, I'd forgotten to uh, wire in the fan, so I've just done that. Here's a, a, a very good example about what I was talking about in terms of not planning ahead, which is my great speciality, not planning ahead. And um, I'd forgotten that I've, I want to insulate all this with, uh, with KO wool. And I was about, I would literally started wiring everything up and then I realized all the KO wool is going to have to go on top of it. So thank God I just remembered after I'd only done a couple of things that can quite easily be undone. But so that's the next thing I'm going to need to do is actually start insulating the oven. I've got two different thicknesses of KO wool. I've got one inch KO wool, which I already had, which I think will be perfect for the outside of the oven. And for the inside of the oven, I got half inch KO wool because I'm going to have to put it underneath and around the elements. And I think that's going to be too tricky. So that's the next job, next job now. And then I will cut some holes for the wires to be able to put go through. Okay, I'm going to try and vaguely explain what's going on here. Um, these are all the cables that are coming in from the PID controller. I wanted the convection of fan to keep going um, throughout the process of tempering, so it had to be independent of the PID. So there's a separate power line that is coming in here to this switch, which is going to activate the fan. The rest of the power is coming in, earthed here, and positive to the two elements here and negative, sorry, live and neutral to these two terminals on here. The, this is the thermocouple and all of that is going into the PID controller. Of course, just when I put everything back together and everything was lighting up, so I thought, ah, it's probably working. Um, and I was wrong. All right, well, um, all problems averted. I'd got the polarity wrong on a couple of the inputs on the PID. And now it appears to be working correctly. And the elements are heating up. So I'm going to have to do some calibration on that, but now at least I feel confident to put the cover back on the oven and then we can start doing some tests, etc. I'm clearly not out of the woods yet. Um, everything's basically working, 
but yesterday when I tested it, um, I noticed it was struggling to get hot and then it wouldn't go over 150 degrees Celsius, which means there's something wrong that I've wired it wrong. So I've got to take all of this off again and trying to and try and work out what's gone wrong. So here we go. So I seem to have fixed the problem and it was actually very simple. Um, if you look at the PID now, it's moving at a, um, at a, a, a very satisfactory um, rate. So the oven is obviously heating up normally. And what I'd done is I had wired this so that it was um, live here, neutral here, coming out straight into neutral there. Uh, sorry, yes, into neutral there and then coming out as neutral here. So that was the live going in and then everything else was looped. But that wasn't enough power to each element. So what I've done now is I've now wired each of the, both elements independently. So there's a live, a neutral, a live and a neutral. And that's clearly done the trick. Um, so I'm delighted about that. The other thing I'm gonna do, which is really tedious, is I was very um, unprepared in terms of the length of the wires going to the PID controller because I've got storage issues here. I've got this oven is too big for me to store very easily and the way I've done it I can't put this on top, I can't do anything so I'm going to think of a way of rewiring this so that actually I can either take it away and then plug it back in which is what I may do um, or at least have the leads long enough so that it can go on top here. So I'm going to work on that, but to all intents and purposes, the oven is now working correctly. There's been a lot of adjusting going on in the background that I have not uh, bored you with, but um, as you can see with all these shenanigans, I've replaced the thermocouple, I put on a, a new one. It's not new actually, it's old, but it's one that I bought for my um, heat treating oven. and. It's much more accurate than the one that came with the Ingbird, this one, which I have to say I was not getting any satisfactory results with. This one is much longer. It's probably about um, uh, 10 centimeters long, maybe six centimeters long, actually. And as you can see from this thermometer to this one, we now have a very accurate um, reading. I did have to uh, change the difference on the thermocut on the Ingbird, on the PID. Um, you can set, for example, plus or minus 10 degrees if you notice that there is a, a discrepancy. And there could be that discrepancy simply because of where the thermocoupler is placed in the oven compared to the thermometer probe, etc., etc. But the important thing is that if you put the, the thermometer probe on the shelf where your blades are going to be, that's where you want the correct temperature, and therefore I've adjusted. But as you can see, uh, we've, we've really got a, a, a pretty good figure here. The other thing that I know is happening is that this door is rubbish. Um, it's letting out a load, there's a gap along here which must be at least two millimeters uh, wide and it's glass so there's a lot of heat coming here and I know that this is making it very difficult for the oven to stay um, uh, accurate. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to insulate the inside of this door with some two millimeter um, thermal paper. I'll, I'll, I'll show you as I, as I, when I install it. But I think that's going to help as well. But again, the proof will be in the pudding. No. The proof of the pudding will be in the eating. <laughs>
Um, I did, of course, make one mistake because I have to. I rewired everything to try and get the wiring uh, less complicated and so that there was always um, basically one set of wires going in. But if you observe here, you see that light that keeps going on and off? That's because I did not separately wire the uh, convection fan. So now the convection fan switches off when the PID switches off and comes on when the PID switches on and the um, SSRI kicks in. Um, so that is a total mistake. Um, but you know what, I, I can't bear to take it all apart again and rewire the whole thing. So right now the temperature seems steady. I'm pretty happy with it. The other thing I have to own up to and it's not a huge problem, but I think it's worth mentioning if anybody wants to make one of these, I'll just switch it off now, um, is this. So, as you know, I added, actually let me just zoom out, I added the, um, uh, this fiber blanket. I think I bought three mil. Um, it was working fine until I re-screwed all the body on and then it would just pop open. And so what I've done is I've put two very small um, uh, you know super magnets I can't remember what they're called now and that just does although not now with that thing in here um, but it holds it perfectly well in place well yet again thanks so much for watching I hope you found it interesting I know my style is very chaotic and it's not very well organized and there are lots of people out there who are making much more organized videos um, it's taken me quite a long time to make this and that's probably because I'm just dreadful with electrics and I'm learning, I am learning, it's getting better, um, but I'm still not there yet. Please remember, electricity is dangerous, take care, um, always get advice, ask questions from a professional if you're not sure. But um, anyway, I hope to show you very soon the results of this oven and some really nice tempering of the blades and other tools to the suitable Rockwell hardness. Anyway, please remember to subscribe, remember to like, comment, please, I'd love to hear your comments, and uh, see you the next one. Thanks a lot.